Kia ora everyone, my name is Tom, I'm a learning specialist at Auckland Museum. Uh, kia ora koutou, <coughs> my name is Mandy, I'm a digital producer at Auckland Museum. Um, so to begin this talk I just want to take you back to uh, three years ago when I was a freshie at Auckland Museum. Um, and I, as part of our induction we actually got taken into the bowels of the museum to see our vast and incredible collection. Uh, and it completely blew my mind. It had been a long held dream to do such a thing. But what actually amazed me was the fact that a lot of these objects would not see the light of day for decades and decades. Mm, is that not playing? Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, of course, um, digital can help to fill this gap by creating digital surrogates, either in the form of photos or photogrammetry, which have done an incredible job. But what I think has actually been a game changer has actually been 3D printing and scanning. Like when you see these kids looking at these objects, they have them right up close to their faces and they're watching, seeing every little detail and really interrogating it. So yeah, a really important piece of tech. Um, yeah, so one of the struggles or challenges that the learning engagement team has been actually marrying these objects to a story or many stories. And this is what I think Museum in a Box does really, really well because it allows these objects to talk. So without further ado, we're going to do a quick demo of Museum in a Box. Utatar are highly prized, beautifully crafted instruments made of a wooden mouthpiece lashed onto a spiraling shell. These. There's more, but you can play with them. So, um, I'll just. Oh, whoops. They've gone to the wrong. Sorry. There we go. So, the tech behind this is there's. Um, three important components and that's the NFC sticker which is actually on that putatara there, you might want to lift it up Tim, um, and then an NFC reader uh, and a small credit card sized computer called a Raspberry Pi. So basically what happens is the reader asks the sticker, hey what object are you? And it says, I'm the putatara and then it, that triggers the audio file to actually play. And the really cool thing about this tech is it's cheap. Uh, those boxes are about $500 and each NFC sticker is 50 cents, so incredibly accessible. Um, so you would have encountered this tech before if you've ever used a transport card like a hop card or a snapper card um, or ever paid for a beer at Splore. <laughs> um, Increasingly this tech is being used in the museum and environment and as part of this talk I actually got to research some ways that it's actually being used. Um, and one of the cool applications is an exhibition that's actually coming to, to Papa in December and that's the Wonderland exhibition. So participants get given an NFC enhanced map when they first arrive and they can trigger various di digital experiences as they walk around. Uh, another awesome application is something called the story of a lamp and this was created by the uh, digital agency called Sandpit and so what they what you can do as part of this experience at the Melbourne Art Centre is you can go and get an NFC enhanced book and you take it to a lamp and you just put it at the bottom of the lamp and it tells you about the story of the Melbourne Art Centre. So quite a nice kind of pick a path and I'll just show you a video of how it actually Hello. works. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, you can, can't you? Hey, come in a little bit closer. I've got a story to tell you. Hello. 
Yeah, so some really cool applications Hello. of it. Oh. There we go. Um, so going back to my first question, like how can we blow the minds of these young children? And in order to do that, I needed to ask another question, and that is, well, what do they know about our collection? Do they know anything? And so we actually asked some of the kids at Parnell Primary in Mangafo School what they knew about our collection. And uh, as you can see, um, they took the question very, very, very seriously. So, here goes. How many objects do you think are stored away in safekeeping at the museum? Mm, I think like about maybe over a hundred would be stored in the museum because the museum is like really big. Museum maybe Hundreds, maybe? Fifty? Hundred and fifty? <laughs> um, I don't know, but there's a lot. Maybe about fifty? Um, seventy? One hundred and seventy? Mm, sixty? Two hundred and one? <laughs> Higher or lower? Three hundred and nine? What? Two million? <coughs> So um, I'm proud to say we completely broke their noodle and yeah, we can definitely blow their minds. How many objects do you... Um, so they were all wrong and um, they could completely underestimate the museum. Um, we have about one and a half million natural science specimens, about over 200,000 human history objects. And when we talk about digital and library archives, that's somewhere in the millions. So it's part of our job in the Learning and Public Programs team to highlight those hidden collections, um, not just the collections themselves, but also the connections that they all have too. Um, and so we think we're having a, a really good idea here with the Museum in the Box. So who are the people behind um, Museum in a Box? As Tim was saying, they're a London-based agency. Uh, and it's, there's only four of them, and they work in service to the cultural he heritage sector. <laughs> um, and this is one of them assembling the boxes there. So they assembled the boxes on site and actually sent them out to um, 40 glam institutions. And we were one of the lucky ones Sorry, I'm very good at this. To be part of that. Yeah, so s distributed all around the world. And one of the cool things that they did is they created quite a community amongst us. So via a Slack channel, we could um, troubleshoot any problems, ask any questions, uh, share digital assets, or any successes that we had during the pilot program. And they were very much part of the lab themselves. So one thing they did is a pop-up exhibition called Seeing Red, which was a series of 1970s feminist posters. And they had the responses of children via museum in a box. So a really nice way to kind of create this layered, self-guided, participatory experiences. Um, so for all of the participants, we had to think about how are we going to create fun, engaging, interesting, interactive content. Um, and we all came across similar questions. And one of them was, who was going to be our narrator? Who was going to be the voice that was going to come out of the box? Would it be a broadcaster? an actor, a child, um, a subject matter expert with a centurion voice. There were lots of um, possibilities. Uh, but one interesting collab was actually done by the people at Museum in a Box. And they travelled to uh, the Aziko Museum in Cape Town and they got Zulu elders to pick out a series of objects and actually describe them. So these Zulu children had the opportunity to hear from these people who understood these objects, had experienced them and knew their history really well. Um, 
and I don't know if you've heard of the Pacific Collection Access Project, but Auckland Museum has been working over a series of years to, with um, Pacific knowledge holders to share their knowledge around our Pacific collection. So this would be an absolute sitter for us, yeah. Another um, question that came up was, what was the subject matter, matter going to be? And obviously um, those objects that were, lended themselves to being 3D printed or there were spare specimens or they could be reproduced were, would be helpful to choosing your subject matter. But another thing we had to consider was whether it could be shareable or remixed. So could it be shared across from New Zealand and beyond? Um, we had tons and tons of content on this Museum in a Box site, uh, so how could we actually share that and remix that? And this really came to light with me, to me, with this particular piece here. So this was done by the Tasmania Museum, and when I saw this I was like, wow, maybe we have some of these kind of fungi. So I instantly emailed the Natural Sciences team and sure enough we do. So potentially we could use some of their content or add to their collection, yeah. Uh, the other question that we had to think about is how are we going to capture our audience? Like, kids are a pretty tough audience um, and one thing that I learnt when I was watching them is that if you showed a part of an object or a part of a specimen, their curiosity was really ignited. Like when we showed them a whale's tooth, a snapper jaw or a shark tooth, they just really were excited by those particular objects. Um, and I think it required them to actually do the hard work of figuring out what that came from, what specimen that came from, or what object that actually came from. Personally, one thing I'd really like to do is a series of macro images, because um, I think this would really ignite their curiosity. Can anybody guess what insect this actually is? <laughs> no, not you! <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we're thinking about using this box, we have to think about the digital curriculum, which is coming next year. Um, <clears throat> so the digital curriculum is not just allowing children to use digital technology, but it's also to, uh, to become digitally capable thinkers. How do you create content in a digital way? Um, so there's going to be a big appetite for this kind of programming come next year. Um, so what do we actually do with the Museum in the Box? Um, we had another, so to speak, museum in a box. It's called the Kete Wananga, that is um, brand new to our learning, uh, new learning offer. Um, this is a box filled with uh, natural science specimens. So in this one, it's from the marine environment, from the Hauraki Gulf. Um, and schools, they can hire this kit and they have it for as long as they want and integrate it in any kind of their, any part of their um, learning. So we thought, okay, why don't we make an underwater themed museum in a box. Um, <clears throat> so Tim, can I get you to hold up the shag? So on the shag here, it's 3D printed. Um, this, tell, uh, not yet. Um, this tells the story of some museum research about the shag and I'm not gonna um, ruin Guy's speech later, so no spoilers, he'll talk about that later. Um, another one is, if you could hold up the ship. So Aaron here, my colleague, is the voice for the ship. So he is uh, a fish living underwater and the sound associated with the NFC sticker is the sound of a ship passing above you if you're living underwater. And what effect could that have to the communities living down there? And Andrew, also another colleague, made our Putatara replica. Okay, so we trialed with two schools, Mangafo and Parnell. So instead of me telling you the feedback, we've got some additional footage. I would describe the boot books as like a, it, it's, um, it converts objects into stories and audio. 
like this little me mechanical technology thing. I would describe it as like a storytelling box. E uh, each item has a sticker on it. When they put the sticker on this thing, it tells you some facts and stuff. Well, it's like a podcast, <laughs> but a very short one. Yeah, the boot box is really fun because it's like having playing and learning combined. I really like the the fact that they could they didn't have an insight into what it was going to be. They had to listen. They had to use a different sense rather than just looking or sitting at a device. Um, I like the the conch shell because it looks really interesting and I don't know that much about it. I've never seen one before. So the box was really positive. Oh, fuck. Um, no, we're going to do that again. Right, get down and get up. This is my shell. Box was absolutely something that the kids have never seen before and so that opportunity to see um, artifacts, to link artifacts to a new kind of learning but then hear about them I think was something that the kids were really interested in and engaged with. One of the things we'd really love to see is that this, be this becoming part of a, an interactive piece of work for the kids where the kids get to um, experience the objects, hear about the objects, link that to their own inquiries but then even being able to take that into the next step and be able to perhaps uh, code their own um, little tag so that they can then take what they've seen from this and then use that as a way of sharing their own learning rather than just purely receiving the information being able to create and share information through that medium as well is something we'd love to see. I'd probably like to see what happened with the tu tunics or the togas I think. I'd want to see what they what happened to them because I don't know. Did they get laundered? I like knowing about like the history and I like knowing about history and snakes. Something extinct maybe? The sound of something extinct because like the if 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 it's extinct then I've probably never heard it before. T Rex warring? Because I have no idea what it sounds like, but I'm pretty sure it would be pretty cool. To do something that involves where the kids are from, like their cultures, so they could almost have an object that relates to them and their culture, and they can tell a story, whether it's, I don't know, food, history, cult, um, celebration, something, or even facts about their country, or whatever it is. I think that would be really interesting, and then you can you kind of get that sense of community within your classroom that you're all sharing something that's really special to you. The kids have so many different cultures and so many different influences in their lives that maybe they haven't found out before so actually getting the community in that home to get involved I think that would be really cool to have make it really special for the for each class. The greatest benefit to us of this kit and this program is the availability to our teachers in their classrooms and to our kids being able to access this information without necessarily having to go to the museum. And I think when we think about how we want to engage our children in learning, every moment counts. So the opportunity for the kit to be here and travel to us and our teachers to have time beforehand to see it, experience it and think about how they're going to use it really has much wider reaching implications than the traditional model of going to the museum, seeing an exhibition and talking about it when we come home. I would describe the boot Yeah, so all in all the kids loved the tech. Um, they loved clapping their eyes on these unusual objects and they loved hearing from experts. Um, one teacher actually expressly said that he was convinced that the children were bored by his voice so by bringing many voices into the classroom we could instantly engage them. Um, and what we found was also really successful was if the teacher primed them um, so made them make predictions about these objects or ask some questions and as you can see this child has a rather terrifying prediction <laughs> of the plastic cup. <laughs> One teacher left the box just sitting in his classroom for a week as a tease 
and he got students to go up and listen to it, see if it's changed at all. He added some stickers to the box throughout the week, and he's like, ooh, it's changing. Um, one kid was very curious and decided to email me, and um, I shouldn't have left my business card on top of the box, but um, <clears throat> it was an illegal email. He didn't get permission to do it, which I didn't know. So I did reply to him, but um, yeah, so he was so intrigued that he happened to email a stranger, which is not very good. <laughs> Lucky it's just me, it doesn't matter. Um, he got banned from his Chromebook for a week. Um, yeah, oh, Mandy. So, um, the team at Museum in a Box said they loved the way we explored the medium of sound and we went out of our way in order to scavenge sound, collect sounds, create sounds. Um, and now that the pilot has actually finished, they've launched a series of kits for small and large organisations. So, check it out. We think it was a really successful pilot. Um, the teachers and the students seem to love it, and they love the idea of making their own collections um, and also having it in their school. So I think that, that was um, great to hear. Um, we're definitely going to have it in our programming next year. Um, in what capacity? Not 100% certain. Um, so we do have a demonstration in the aptly named Oceana Room um, where you can come and trial the museum in the box, have a look at the sort of stuff that we've created, and would really love to see or hear what you think would work in your institution as well. So um, come and see us at the Auckland Museum stall. Uh, any questions for Tom or Mandy? Questions? I've got lots, but I'll ask them later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great, all right, well, um, thank you. Afternoon tea time, I think.